and we are back to learning Inkscape and this time I'm going to show you how to create a spirograph effect. We've got an extension for that. So let us just go to extensions, render and spirograph. And the menu is quite simple once you've understood it. It's just five values and a simple drop down. Let me click on the preview and this is what we've got here. And we've got three options for radius. Uh, let me put the one that I've just applied in the background. Maybe I'll put that to the left hand side. And now I create a new one. Let me check live preview. And you can see when I change the first ring radius, it gives us a completely different shape. So gear radius, it needs to be smaller than a ring radius. If you once used Biograph, you understand why. I haven't, so I had to research that and I found a good guide that I'm going to link to in the description below. But in general, the gear radius needs to be smaller than a ring radius. We've got a pen radius and I'm going to explain what these three are later. The rotation, it just rotates the shape clockwise. So when we turn that to 90, you can see that it moves 45 degrees to the right hand side. The quality, when you set that to 1, you get a weird results, but the difference between, for example, 10 and 20 is almost neglectable. At least for most shapes. So if you don't go too low with the quality, there's not a huge difference. The drop down, you can put it to the in and the outside of the big static ring. Now let me show you what all of that means. As I've said, I had to look it up. I've never used Biograph, but you can see that there's a static big ring and it has an inside and an outside. And this is what the dropdown is for. So you can place the gear on the inside of the static ring or on the outside. And there's also the ring radius. The gear inside is a small one that either rotates on the inside or outside and this would be the gear radius and you can see these small these small holes inside of the gear which would be the pen radius here's a nice guide i'm going to link to that and it shows you which values would create which shapes and it gives you a little bit of further information so if we copy for example these first three values to recreate the shape it's 96 56 20 and we'll get this just look at the guide and you can see it is exactly what we wanted. You can also create this shape 105, 75 and 50. And we'll get this. So if you've never used Spirograph or you want to know more, just check out the guide that I'm going to link to below. And there, this whole process or this whole menu is a little bit explained without actually mentioning Inkscape. Once you've done that, apply it and you can treat it as a regular object. So select it, give it a fill color, for example. Or you can open your fill and stroke menu on an object. You can increase the stroke width or give it a gradient, for example, as the stroke paint. And this is how you can create such spirograph effects in Inkscape. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.